Hello and welcome everyone, this is Zetu from MMOgrafia. It's been a some time since the game released, but today I'm coming with something really awesome. Thanks to Bart, I can share with you amazing build for Beastmaster. I will be showing off semi-endgame build with legendary potential 2 items, so a lot more to be improved on it, especially if you are in Merchant's Guild. Please note, you don't need exactly the same items to make it work. We will come back to itemization later on. As you can see on last timestamps, this build easily melting all bosses without any effort. Your La 4 seems like a joke, and I mean it, just check this out. Build is very tanky thanks to great world generation and other defensive mechanics. It makes this build very good choice for endgame corruption pushing. So without wasting time, let's take a look at the skill trees. Our first skill of choice is Summon Frenzy Totem. That's our DPS buffer. It boosts our whole DPS output through Frenzy. Frenzy gives us a lot of attack speed and this build highly rely on it. Additionally, our aftershocks will land in place where we place our totem. Then we have Swipe. That's our right button attack. Through stacking it will give us even more damage and aspect of the panther buff. So again, more attack speed. We are also using it to generate mana. Additionally, we have there also well known for Path of Exile players Cooling Strike on 14% threshold. This will help us execute enemies even faster. Now it's time for Clem de la Clem of this build, Earthquake. Main damage output slamming ground skill. Remember about Aftershock mechanic, which is main source of our physical damage over time. Aftershocks will appear on our totem, so keep in mind to have it near enemies. Our next skill of choice is Warcry, another buffing skill with amazing Berserk on use. Thanks to it, we are getting more attack speed, so overall more damage, and pulling enemies is just a nice addition to it. And of course we need some movement skill, so Fury Leap landing as the last skill of choice. There is not much to say about it, it's just normal setup seen in many many builds. Now we can talk about the items. First, let's see which items are mandatory to make the build works. So as first we need Cleaver Solution Axe. That's our main weapon of choice, we need two of them. Thanks to converting strength into intellect, we are getting triple dipping. By stacking strength, we will get more DPS, more ward and more armor. We also need that sweet plus one to all skills. Another needed item is Exsanguinous. Obvious peak for playing low life build at this moment. Just a lot of ward generation. Another needed item is Twisted Heart Relic. This is again awesome peak for ward generation and additionally, it gives us plus one to elemental skills and extra strength. And last mandatory item on list, Boulder Fists. Most importantly for us is to switch off Leech. We don't want it, since it can break our low life damage path. For legendary potential, we want to add experimental affix for additional world generation. Now let's take a look on the items that are optional but boosting our build a lot. Exalted item with plus 4 to earthquake skill. That's allow us to pull off even much more DPS. Omnis necklace. If you will be able to get it with the nice rolls, this will be really good addition to our build. Last steps of the living. Boots. Another world generation item. And now, the most overlooked item by everyone, Idol, that you will probably do not pick up from the ground. 10% of chance to spawn a torn totem. This Idol can triple our DPS. Why? If you are listening, our aftershocks are being spawned around our totems. When we have one frenzy totem, it will spawn around it. But what will happen if we will have three totems, one frenzy and two torn totems? Well, the aftershocks will triplicate and overlap, so don't forget to get it fast as possible. If you ever wonder what stats to pump into empty legendary potential slots, 
always go for attack speed. More swipe speed is equal more totem spawn, more mana and more earthquakes. More earthquakes is equal more aftershock, so it means more damage. We can also utilize two more items. Shattered Chain Belt. This will add 20% more damage, buffing it up to 13 million DPS. And very rare Red Ring. Additional defensive and offensive layer. Remember, we are stacking strength and intelligence through our Axe Cleaver solution. Of course, try to get more legendary potential everywhere. Passives. As always, you can find link to last epoch tools down below. So I will not be talking about all the passives, just check it over there, read it carefully, and you will know everything what you need to understand how this build works. I only will mention Berserker passives. We are not playing low life only because of Ward, but also because of that passive is our main DPS boost. Now a big disclaimer, this build is not a speed farmer. If you want to run through Echos in 15 seconds, killing all mobs, pick a Rune Master or Marksman. This is a melee build with all drawbacks of slower clear. In my opinion, with Merchant Guild and LP3, LP4 items, you can easily reach 20 million Aftershock ticks. With the gear as is on the video, this is Circle of Fortune by the way, 7 or 800 corruption should be possible, but with the merchant guild and LP3 and 4 gear, 1000 corruption should be not a problem. If you want a more defensive option, you can always replace one cleaver solution with a shield like Bastion of Honor with LP1 block effectiveness will be one of our best options. With that kind of setup, one and half thousand corruption should be still possible. And that's it from us for today. As I said before, this build with so juicy ticks is very fun to play and melting all content like a charm. Just try it and let us know in the comments what you think about it. Leave a sub if you want to see more awesome builds from MMOGRAPHIA. And I'm leaving you with the, some nice boss kills and see you next time. Bye!